Hello everyone, a warm welcome from London today. Uh, we are going to talk about the Master in Real Estate, Finance and Hotel Development. So before I introduce uh, our guest speakers on the line with us today, just a few, uh, a few rules for you to enjoy the session as much as possible. So uh, we will start with a short presentation, about 30 minute presentation, and then we will move on to the Q&A. So you are welcome to ask your question at any point during the session, but we will only answer all of them at the end. The reason is that some of your questions might actually be answered in the next few slides. So don't panic, ask your question, but we won't answer them until the end. The comment uh, chat box should be at the top of your screen, top right or top left, depending on your device. Um, and obviously you won't be able to use your camera or your microphone. So let's introduce our panel. So we have our program director, Nicole Phillips. Hello, Nicole, how are you? Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session today. So Nicole will, uh, will introduce the program, uh, tell you more about the field trips, the guest lecturer, and then we will move on to career and internship with Astrid Segma. Hello, Astrid, how are you? Hi, Laurie, I'm very good. Thank you. Looking forward to the presentation today. So Astrid is our career and internship manager. She is based in Switzerland. And we also have a current student uh, on the line with us, Anastasia. Hello, Anastasia. How are you? Hello, I'm good as well. Thank you. So Anastasia uh, just started uh, in September, uh, but she's based on campus, so she will be able to she will be able to tell you more about the, the student life and uh, and why she decided to join the program, how her experience with the application process. So feel free to ask your question to Anastasia if you'd like more information from the student. So without further delay, I will uh, hand over to Nicole uh, and I'll see you after the presentation for the Q&A. Thanks so much, Laurie, for the introduction. So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, very excited to have everyone here today. So just to give you some background on what this degree is all about. So we really take a focus on anything real estate relating very much to the hospitality world. So our course is an, an, a very good introduction to the elements of hotel consultancy, hotel development, hotel valuation, and then linking it into more specific real estate and finance with always an eye towards the hospitality industry. Now, what makes us unique? What makes us different? Um, obviously a variety of stuff, but uh, we take a very different approach in our teaching compared to a lot of the master degrees. So typically when you look at master degrees, you will see that there is an allocated number of hours each week. We focus it completely different. We allocate a week or two weeks per uh, specific topic. And then in those two weeks, that is all we will address. It's quite intense. There's a lot of information and typically quite a steep learning curve, which I think Anastasia can vouch for. But the good thing is it immerses you in the topic. You have access to, our, uh, to your lecturer, of course. You have guest speakers coming in. And we very much wrap up a very specific topic within that time period. We really focus on bringing the real world into the classroom. That is done through your lecturers. Um, I lecture myself. I've done uh, 16 years within the Marriott Feasibility Development Team. And then everyone's got uh, you know, a background similar to me, very much from the industry and very keen to bring that experience into the classroom and share that with you. We have a vast amount of different guest speakers coming in. Um, we had the honor in one of my courses to have uh, one of the leading consultancy firms, Cushman's, come in. We had a Hyatt developer. And I think that really for the students gives you that exposure to what's happening, the con and, but also the connections to the network, which, which you are very much are going to be focusing on. Um, it's very personalized how we teach. Um, uh, we very much interact with our students continuously. We're available, we are present. Um, and it's, it's not uh, the lecturing style that maybe some of you are used to. We, we really ensure that it is an interactive session. You know, we, we discuss with our students, we challenge them, we're on the spot in a classroom with them. It means you have to obviously participate, you have to be present, but I think therefore your learning curve will be much 
steeper, much, uh, much more immense than you probably would have in a more, more traditional setting. But I have the next slide, Laurie. Thank you very much. So um, being on London, well, London is a great city. I'm slightly biased. I've been here about 20 something years. I think it's a great city. But it also gives you a lot of benefits. Um, obviously, a lot of the key players in this industry that you're looking at. So let's call it the, the, the hospitality real estate industry. They are based in London. This is where you will find the majority of the players with head offices. So having um, you know the, the, the key players that you need to interact with so close by gives you an opportunity to visit them. They can come to the campus. They can come into the classroom. And that really helps you build up that network and connection. Obviously, London is a very dynamic real estate market. Uh, if we just look at uh, the hotel transactions that take place here in recent years, uh, I think there's is a massive learning curve, you know, for students to participate in. And you can go and visit them. You can talk to the key players involved. And I think that is a huge benefit. Can you have the next slide, please? So how do we set up this degree? Um, so it's split up in what we call three semesters. Your first two semesters are very much on campus. So you're in the classroom with us. The third semester is your internship. Um, some students actually start a, uh, a permanent role at that point, and Astrid can touch upon on that. But I'm very much gonna focus on those first two semesters when you're with us in the classroom. So in the first semester, we, um, and then we'll see that on the next slide as well, so I'm a little bit faster than, than probably I need to be, but we are very much focusing on what we call the hotel consultancy slash development world. And we start with an introduction to the finance element. And then in the second semester, we really take that, uh, that finance real estate to the next level. Within your uh, degree that you'll be doing, we have some exciting certificates that are really valuable for the workplace that we offer you. Um, but we also give you an opportunity to do a business field trip. So this could be uh, one of the key cities in Europe. And when we take you on these field trips, we will introduce you to new trends, new concepts. We introduce you to the key players. Uh, you'll have a vast amount of meetings, networking events. Um, one of our students on actually the first field work we did, which is in Amsterdam, um, he made such a good impression on one of the consultancy firms that he actually was offered a role on the spot. So every time you meet uh, people from the industry, you remember it is a networking event and can actually um, result in a full time employment. So we also have something called the real estate challenge, and this is really the opportunity for our students to bring together all their learning. So you're working on a, a real life example or project with a client. So this could be any of the outside you know, contacts that we will introduce you to. And within your group, you have a week to complete a project and you will be presenting your solution and your uh, recommendations to this client. And again, it's a great opportunity to show to a potential employer what you're capable of uh, creating that network, um, but also for you to take the chance to bring all the different elements, and there's a lot of elements we touch upon, to really integrate them and bring them together into that final project. I may have the next slide. So here's the vast amount of courses, and I know it might seem like a lot, but there, there is, there is a, a process very much in place. So when you look at your first semester, that we really tackle the development process here. So we start off with the background. What's happening out there? What are the trends? What developments are taking place? Who are the key players? And then we take you through the process. So how does a hotel project really happen? Now, from an, an empty piece of land to a fabulous five-star hotel, what is behind that process? What kind of analysis takes place? And one of the projects the students will do is actually do a, a feasibility study in a very short period of time. But, you know, having just marked my, my last uh, groups, they've done an amazing job. You know, I'm really proud of what they have put together. And, you know, some of it is, is at a professional level. So hats off to them. Um, we will talk about asset management. Now, asset management sometimes is a little bit confusing to people, but we're very much talking about the process of 
how are contracts um, how are contracts set up? So versus management, versus franchise, versus leases. Who are the key investors? Who are the key players? Because they all have differences. There's different categories, and therefore they have different expectations and different um, expectations in terms of return on investment. And it's very important to understand that basis, because that will be very much. Uh, explored further in the second semester very much when you are looking at real estate markets, portfolio elements. Um, so that is very much semester one. Semester two, as I said, that is where it comes together. This is where the numbers come in. Now, we talk a lot about hospitality in hotels. That's, that's our passion, truly. But there is more to, obviously, re real estate than just hotels. And we will factor that in. We will introduce the students to that. We will look at the commercial elements, retail elements, and obviously make sure you have enough exposure that when you graduate and you want to have maybe a more generic real estate consultancy role, that you have the experience and the knowledge to do so. You will see in here on this slide as well, some of the certificates we provide. I'm not gonna go into detail too much on them, but what I can tell you is that these are very well recognized in the industry, um, you know, and it will certainly set you apart that you have done these when you start applying for jobs, whether it is your first role, your second or third role. You know, these are certificates and that I said, give you that little bit of an extra edge against the other applicants. So it is really helpful to have these under your belt. The field trip can potentially happen in semester one or semester two. I think with the current situation of obviously uh, COVID, you understand that it's a little bit hard for us to narrow down an exact time. But rest assured, you know, we want to make sure that our students have an amazing experience, so that they get a full exposure to concepts, to the key players, to contacts. Um, and the seven past ones we have done, they've always been an amazing success. And obviously, semester three, which is that I have um, Astrid Segmar, she'll be telling you much more about that. But please rest assured that although my focus is very much on the academic part, you know, in the back of our mind is we want to ensure, you know, that you leave this degree, obviously with a fantastic experience, but that you get into the industry and that you get that role that you are so keen to get. So we want to make sure you get the right introductions and all the support you need. Can I have the next slide, please? So here's a, just a, a short overview of the people we bring into the classrooms. Um, obviously, you see myself there. Um, Deborah Adams, uh, she is... Uh, a pro on the finance element and on the financial analysis. I mean, I've had the pleasure of working with Deborah for now a couple of years. Um, we have Madi, who actually works for Jones Lang LaSalle uh, from the investment management. So again, very much he his approach is about bringing the real life, the, the real world into your classroom. So you don't necessarily get traditional lecturers. You know, again, some of you might have degrees where you sit in a big hall, and you have a lecturer on the other side who really talks at you. Our approach is very different. We want to interact with you. We want to challenge you. We want to hear your ideas. We want you to challenge us because it's the learning curve really very much where we're going for. Um, we've got Catherine who did the um, Hotel Trends as one of the first courses uh, this year. Uh, she is uh, very well known in the industry and I remember her from the Deloitte days. Uh, she's very passionate, as, as Anastasia probably can vouch for, a very passionate uh, lady in the classroom. And then Michael Hayward, um, he was um, in charge of the field trip last year, and he is uh, a master in, in terms of obviously editing investments and real estate, and is a great contributor uh, to the degree as well. Has lots of contacts, so someone, again, all of these people that you see in front of you, we all have our networks and we're very happy to introduce the students to our networks. You know, we want to really support you, not just from the academic point of view, but from every element to get your career up and running when you leave this degree. So as I say, all my students, and again, Anastasia can vouch for this, is, you know, every time you have a lecturer walk through the door you know connect with them on linkedin get in touch with them follow up with them afterwards because it's our real estate industry is all about networks it's all about knowing the right people um and i said the sooner you start that network element the better i have the next slide please 
Uh, sorry, Nicole, for, for interrupting. Perhaps we can ask Anastasia uh, her experience with the different uh, lecturer and her views on how you know it, it's, it helps you connecting to the industry. It would be nice to hear from her. Yes, of course. Um, so obviously, as you can see, they come from like very di different fields and they have uh, a lot of experience also working in these field fields. So they know themselves a lot. But for example, um, for every course, we also get um, they bring in some guest speakers. Um, so, for example, um, well, as uh, as Ms. Phillips already uh, said, we had, for example, Hyatt coming in as well as someone from Cushman and Wakefield. Uh, but for example, Ms. Adams, she also ensured that uh, last week we actually had a presentation from someone who was working at Hotstats, um, that's um, a company that kind of gathers a lot of different data uh, that is widely used in the in the industry to kind of. Um, yeah, compare yourself to your uh, competitors, but to also see how you're doing yourself. Um, even today, this this morning, I had a presentation from uh, from Hilton, um, uh, from someone who works there in feasibility, which also really links back uh, with our last project. So it's really interesting um, that uh, while you're in, in the courses, you're also straight away connecting with people um, from the from the industry, and uh, that way you can really see. Um, if that's something that is like a field you want to go into and already, uh, like as Ms. Phillips said, make the connection, for example, also on LinkedIn, because um, it can help you later on when you're looking for an internship, but also even later when you're looking for to switch jobs, for example, as well. Thank you, Anastasia. So it's already the end of the of of the part for, for Nicole. So we will uh, move on to current internship with uh, with us. Thank you very much, Lori. Um, yes, so I think both um, Nicole and Anastasia have done a, a great introduction to career and internships already here. Um, we are very much about the network and the individual approach. So we have a dedicated team um, for the master students and for the team to support everything concerning career and internships. Um, so myself, I am actually the one who takes care of all the master students and all the master programs. Uh, so I have been the uh, I've had the pleasure of the of helping Anastasia from her day one on campus, <laughs> although I am unfortunately based in Switzerland. <laughs> Um, we really ensure that we are there for the students from day one, as I said, um, and we, I'm not going to say that we take you by the hand, but we are there as a support throughout your academic semesters, as well as upon graduation or at the end during your semester three. We have roughly, I'm going to say 250 plus recruitment visits a year. Now, we are currently very much in an online environment, and I will come back to this on a later slide um, and go into more details on this. But for the moment, we are very much in an online environment still. Unfortunately, we hope to be able to go back to more um, live environments in the near future, but that will be pandemic independent, unfortunately. Um, we also have a career and internship portal, um, which is our tool for any students that are with Gleon, where they can search for opportunities, connect with employers, um, network, um, and be assured that everything that they look at has been checked and approved by us. Again, I'll come back to this a little bit later on. Through this portal, um, we have roughly, I'm going to say, about 7.7, .7, so more than seven offers per student in terms of internships. Now we're looking at across the board here, so both for our bachelors and our master's students, but that high amount, that is thanks to an ever-growing network through uh, the academic teams that are helping us bring in new contacts, through students who go out on internships, and of course through all the other events that are taking place um, as well. So next slide, please. So the career and internship portal. Now, this is a portal um, that is exclusive for Glion students. OK, and um, it is a portal that brings together the students and the employers. 
basically every single employer and every single vacancy which is on this portal has been checked by a member of our team before it is published and made available to the students. This means two things. One, if you're looking at it, you know that it's, it is a valid placement. And two, it means that the employers who are on there, they're actually looking for Gleon students. They've joined this portal for a reason, which means it's a little bit of a shortcut into with the company. Um, we have an ever-growing network on this portal. Um, as I said, it comes in through employers that come to us, it comes in through students that find internships, and it comes in through uh, events and so on. Now, there is also an application because we all know that in today's society, we live on our phones. <laughs> so uh, there is an application for this portal. So whether you happen to find yourselves on the train or on the bus, um, or a passenger in the car because you won't be driving and doing this, I hope, uh, you will be able to uh, check the latest offers, the latest employers, highlight things, and be able to then immediately when you get home, maybe apply for that one opportunity that you saw came up. It is also a portal where we collect all the information. So, for example, Anastasia has had the opportunity to through her other academic portals, go in on this portal as well to, for example, download an interactive world map where you can check your eligibility on where to go around the world based on your own passport. So it's very much a portal where we're gathering all the information, all the contact and all the network, um, and we're making it available to you as students. I don't know, Anastasia, if you have anything you want to add on this or... <laughs> Yeah, besides just having um, kind of the portal, uh, you are getting support on other uh, things as well. So, for example, also with making sure your uh, CV looks as attractive as possible as well, because we all know that, um, well, all of these recruiters are seeing so many C CVs in a day, so you really do want yours to stand out. Um, so it's not just the companies on there, but we are really getting uh, supported in uh, on a lot of different areas as well. So I think that's... Uh, kind of important to uh, mention yeah. as well. <laughs> Absolutely, and as Anastasia said, it's it's not just how to find the job. It's where we're really working with you. As you said, it's the CV. Um, it's where can you go in the world. Um, now we also have coming up things like uh, what about social media? What about the motivation letter? What about interview techniques? How do you network? All of these things are covered and they're covered throughout your study. So some parts are happening during semester one, other parts are happening during semester two, where it best fits with the program and where you're at currently um, in terms of your search. And it's very much an individual approach. So yes, there are sessions, but then through this portal that you can see here, you can then book appointments directly with myself. And we have a one-on-one -on -one discussion on what can I do here? What is best to put on my CV? Uh, what about this motivation letter? Have I phrased myself correctly here? So as I say, it's, it's very much an individual approach and we work very closely as well with, the, with Nicole and uh, the academic team uh, to bring in contacts and see what's happening and where we are in, in the process with the students. So next slide, please, Laurie. So, Leon Connect and Recruit. This is very close to me right now because it's actually actually happening right now as we speak, <laughs> this semester's event. So Anastasia will jump right back into this after this presentation, I believe, or maybe you will have lunch first. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have the great pleasure of welcoming um, more than a hundred different companies um, in an online environment where our students are able to connect with them and have interactions immediately online. It can be anything from uh, just a chat, an introduction, a networking opportunity to a real scheduled interview. This depends on where you're at in your education at that time. Um, and we have recruiters uh, from all different industries. Um, it's hospitality, it's luxury, it's recruitment companies, it's restaurants. Um, and one thing that we've had today, Anastasia, uh, you mentioned it before, it was this amazing Hilton presentation. Um, what would you say was the greatest um, uh, takeaway from that presentation? Um, I think the greatest takeaway from it, because 
Um, we are quite a small class um, in this masters and uh, actually this presentation was uh, especially just for our masters so um, that makes it uh, even though it was online it makes it uh, very easy um, to connect with uh, with the person that is giving the presentation so uh, for example I myself I asked um, uh, Pierre uh, like uh, for example this is really a field I want to go go into what kind of recommendations could you give me to kind of uh, keep an eye out on uh, on your job postings or how would you recommend me to um, for example to search for the right internships to be able to go into this field um, and you really also get a very uh, good overview um, from of what they kind of do uh, in this particular field because someone who's really doing this job is coming uh, with, a, with a presentation and telling you that and I think uh, that is always the best way of really getting to know like uh, is this something that I want to do yes or no um, so yeah. that I would say that's the main uh, takeaway that I had uh, from this morning. Thank you very much, Anastasia. And and this is typically something that just shows one of the ways that we try and and individualize for each group. So as Anastasia said, this was exclusively for the um, her class. Uh, so no other students were invited to this presentation. It was quite technical, but it also was exactly what you needed. Um, and this is this is what we're looking to do. And um, as Nicole said earlier, bringing in those connections from the industry that are so invaluable for the students to have. So we work hand in hand, both with the students, what they're looking for and with the academic team on that. So we we hope to bring in many more presentations such, such as the Hilton one <laughs> uh, for the future when you might be joining us um, but in the meantime we are very much enjoying the um, event that is going on right now thank you Laurie thank you Astrid um, so just to go uh, briefly over the entry requirement for this program um, so just a, a quick disclaimer, we don't have a counselor on the line today um, and usually if you, if you have any particular question regarding the application process, it's often related to your personal situation, either your visa, country of, uh, of residence or, or experience. So we won't answer any question related to uh, the application process today or the entry requirements. Um, if you want to ask your question on this topic, I invite you to go on the website. So if you haven't been, if you are not in touch already with a counselor, uh, you can fill ever a contact form and someone will be in touch or fill uh, your application. It's just very, very uh, simple. You, you, you start the application and then someone gets in touch with you to get, to get you through the different steps. Uh, so very briefly, uh, you need to have a bachelor degree to be uh, eligible for this program. Um, you need to be able to, uh, to give us an evidence of your level of English. Um, and also for uh, since it's a program only delivered in London, you will most likely have to apply for a visa unless you're a national or you have your uh, settlement or pre-settlement visa, even if you're coming from the EU. Uh, because of Brexit, obviously, now you all have to apply for a visa. Um, okay, so that's all for the intro requirement. It's now time to move on to the Q&A. So uh, please hit the question box if you'd like to ask any question to the panel member on the line with us today. Okay, first question coming. Is this program tough for students who have limited knowledge in finance and economics? So this might be for Nicole. Um, it is expected that you have a certain base of financial knowledge. Now, uh, I, I would normally get the student, you know, who's who's participating to answer this, but the finance element doesn't really come up yet. That is going to be very much towards the end of this semester or the second semester. Um, I think you need to have a conversation with a counselor if, if you already have one. And if not, I would reach out as Laurie recommended and get in touch with one of the counselors because it really depends case by case. And we will talk to you a bit more about what kind of requirements we would uh, recommend from a financial aspect. Economics probably less. 
it's more that you have some base of corporate finance. I think you would definitely need that for the second part of the semester. The way we teach is we don't teach you the basic managerial accounting or basic uh, finance. It is kind of expected that you have that knowledge from your bachelor's degree very much. And therefore, we kind of just take it up to the next level. But I would recommend you maybe talk to your counselor a bit more about it because that could be a case to case conversation. Thank you, Nicole. How many hours of class per week do we have on average? Okay, um, let me take that and maybe Anastasia can tell us about outside of class. Um, so when we have a block, as we call that, so a one week block is 15 hours, so one five, uh, 15 hours in class, which is a contact with a lecturer. And the two block, as we call it, that is 30, but that is 15 in one week and the 15 in the other week. We would expect you obviously to spend, you know, more than that, obviously, in terms of additional work. Anastasia, do you want to share with us how it's been for you? How much, how much work do you get outside of class, do you think? Um, it really depends per person as well. So it really is how much, um, it kind of depends on what you want to get out of it, how much time you uh, put into it outside of class as well. But I uh, recommend to put in, um, uh, definitely sufficient to like a lot of time outside of class as well because it's only going to benefit you later on as well because each class kind of builds upon each other as well so uh, the better you have understanding of your uh, classes now the more it will help you also in your uh, future classes and future semesters um, but it's not as if uh, every day uh, we're working from nine till nine on class so um, it depends. Sometimes you will also have to work uh, on uh, on weekends if you, for example, have a deadline uh, on uh, on Monday. Uh, but it really um, depends as well on how well um, yeah you manage your time as well during the week and um, how efficiently you work, for example, with your team as well. How you kind of divide the work or if you do everything uh, together. Um, and then as well, for example, some. Uh, courses might be um, easier for for some, so uh, so you yourself have to put in less time. But for example, if you know that finance is is your weakness, of course, um, you kind of can imagine that that is, for example, a course that where then during the week you will have to put in, for example, some more time into studying, for example. Thanks, Anastasia. I think that's a very good summary, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Talking about career opportunities, so perhaps Nicole and Astrid can tell us more about what are the career opportunities after this master and also where are the, the, the potential uh, company hiring? Are they all in London or in the EU, uh, in the US? So yes, I would like a bit more information about that. Well, I think firstly, um, one thing that Nicole touched upon earlier is that, um, which I didn't go into, but this is the perfect opportunity. We don't limit the students in terms of what they should be going for um, for their semester three. So if they find an internship, they can do an internship. If they find the corporate training, they can join that. If they find a direct entry position, they can do that. So it's very much up to the the wishes and the possibilities for the student. Um, and their individual situation for semester three. Um, obviously, this also, let's say, opens up the market. <laughs> um, and uh, in terms of um, what is out there, it, it really depends. Obviously, with the market being what it is in London, a lot of the big companies, a lot of the big players are there and they are at hand, they're just there a, a grasp away for the students. And this is an amazing opportunity. Um, but we also see that, um, you know, for example, we have students going into their home countries in France, in Germany, um, in, um, in Asia Pacific, wherever it is. Um, but again, it, it depends very much on the student's individual situation, I have to say. So it's not going to be one set area or one set type of position for, for the crowd. Um, so the career opportunities are as varied as the student profiles, I would say. Don't you agree, Nicole? Yeah, I do. And, and if I actually can add to that is I think a lot of people will start a degree with a position in mind. You know, I'm going to do this degree and then I'm going to be X. 
And I think because you're being exposed to so many different elements of the hospitality real estate during the course, you're going to change your mind a couple of times. And that's okay because there are paths, career paths, you're probably not aware of that you didn't even know you could do. So I think it is good to have a very much an open mind. It's good to know what you want, but keep that open mind. And that's what we're to hand for. That's why I'm here. That is what Astrid is here for, is to support you in these discussions. So um, I meet with my students on a regular basis, have one-to-ones, you know, and obviously he's there to support them in the academic element, but also very much to say, all right, how are you finding it? What are you interested in? You know, giving them advice, saying, you know, how would you pursue something like that? So between Astrid and myself, I think you'll find you get a lot of support uh, throughout this course to, to help you guide towards the role you really want to do. You know, we're not forcing anything upon you. We're giving you all the opportunity and explain to you what is available but you would have to narrow down very much which path you would like to take. Um, and it's okay not to know that in the first couple of months when you start, you know, I said, you know, Anastasia is a couple of weeks in and, you know, she obviously has found something she's very uh, interested in, but it might be that something else pops up in a few months and she actually thinks, ha, huh, that, that could be of interest as well. So that's what we're here for, to support Anastasia and other students with figuring out what they like to do, where they want to be heading. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And um, so many students come during the first few weeks and say, I have no clue what I'm supposed to be doing or where I want to go. And I'm like, that's perfectly fine. You just started. Explore, feel free to discuss, see what the subjects take you, what you're going to learn. And you don't have to decide on day one what it is that you want to do in a year's time. And um, yeah, and as I say, I, I'm I'm guessing uh, many of your colleagues came in maybe with set set uh, ideas as well, and maybe you're starting to realize that oh, there's a whole different world out here. Uh, yeah, actually, it's, uh, I think uh, like two weeks ago, uh, one of the lecturers asked like kind of what fields uh, everyone was uh, was uh, interested in, and I think around eighty percent kind of said the same thing. Um, well, we didn't even have had that class that kind of deals with that topic yet. So I'm uh, very curious myself to see where like in a couple of months, uh, how all our heads will, will be set then and probably we'll all have kind of um, maybe different ideas of what we actually want to do. <laughs> Excellent. And if I may just say, because it's, it's about, you know, how easy is it to find maybe opportunities, etc. There has been a, a massive amount of interest mm -hmm. from the real estate world in this degree. Um, and I think we we are experiencing, you know, not just your traditional hotel consultancy or your hotel operator, it's white label companies, real estate investors, private equity. They're all kind of learning about what this degree is about. And they're very keen because it's, it's very rare to find students that have been just trained and educated just very specifically on this topic. So I would say there's a huge interest out there in our industry for this degree. So I foresee, I you know, what we've seen so far with our students is they all land on their feet. They all find a role relating to what they wanted to do and in the field they wanted to be. So, you know, obviously we can't guarantee, but the, the, the stats, the information is showing that, you know, if you do this degree and you obviously enjoy it and you do it well, that you should certainly land on your feet after that. We've actually been uh, interviewing a few weeks ago um, uh, uh, an, an alumnus and, uh, and, and we went to her workplace. So you should uh, be able to find the video on our YouTube account uh, in a few days. It should be, it should be live. And you will, uh, you will hear from, uh, from Nicole, from uh, Catherine Lecrest, one of the lecturers, from uh, Victoria, our alumni, and also from her boss, her manager. And he actually explained exactly what you said, Nicole, that he, he never found a similar program before where you, the students are actually ready for, for, for working in the industry. They know everything they need to know. So, so keep an eye on our YouTube channel for, for this video. Uh, next question. Do you have any assignment to submit during your internship or will you solely be focused on your job? So I'll take care of this one. <laughs> so if you, um, 
as you might have seen in the slides, you have a choice during semester three to either do the practical internship or a business research project, which is purely academic. So obviously, if you choose to do the business research project, you don't have a practical internship to do. If you choose to do the internship, which is my side of things, uh, there will be a reflective report to submit. Uh, it's really a reflective report, which is based on your work experience. Um, so it's it's not like a massive assignment, but it's there for you to to understand your own experience. Uh, so yes, you do have a reflective report to submit, and it is due um, just after you finish your required length of the internship. Thank you, Astrid. Next question: How many students do we have in one class, and what are their background? Are they all European or, or internationals? So we, we, we currently have a class of 14 and on the nationalities, Anastasia, do you want to tell us what your background is? Where are you from? Yes, I'm Dutch myself. Um, I think I might actually be one of the few or maybe only ones in the whole Guion that is Dutch, which, uh, which is quite special, I think. But we have a very diverse class. We have uh, people from uh, uh, from uh, India, Switzerland, France. Uh, we have someone from Jordan. I think we have next week. Um, we have someone from Egypt as well. So uh, literally, actually, from all over the world. Mexico, if I'm correct. Like Mexico, Mexico as well. Someone from US um, as well. Someone from Pakistan. So. Um, very, di very diverse, so also not just uh, European students, but um, yeah, all over actually, which is very interesting because you can learn a lot from each other as well, um, which I think as well, because we have a lot of group projects to do, you also learn very well uh, to work with, with, with each other and you also because we all have like different cultures, you learn to adapt very well as well. Um, so it gives you a lot of benefits as well with being in such a diverse class. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. Um, another question for you, Anastasia. Uh, so, just to summarize the question, so how's the student life in London? So, what are the opportunities outside of outside of the classroom to maybe network or just really experience the city? Yes, so um, I myself, I live on campus. Um, I chose to live on campus because, um, well, I don't, I didn't know anyone in London, so I thought that would be a very easy way for me to meet uh, other people, to, to, to meet my classmates uh, and to make friends straight away. Um, besides that, we have, um, well, Glion, uh, the Student the Government Association organizes quite a lot of uh, events as well um, and different welcome drinks, but for example, quite often we go uh, with people from our class also we go into the city center uh, either to a bar or we go out since everything is open here in London so that is very nice um, so um, yeah the student life is actually um, very good I would say um, I don't like I can't say how it is to kind of live off campus because I didn't experience that um, we do well the campus is a bit further away from the city center, but it is um, reachable very well by a public transport. So that's uh, very nice. And um, well, a very big benefit of London is that you even have a public transport during the night. So you always have a way to get home as well, even when it's quite late. Um, so I would say that student life is quite uh, diverse and there's something for everyone also because London is that diverse itself as well, I would say. Thank you. Um, so you actually have the opportunity to, to choose whether you want to live on or off campus. Yes, for sure. So so that's uh, that's that's the opportunity. And yes, we are based in southwest in southwest London. So the the good thing about that is, as Anastasia mentioned, you're not in central London but very close by, and you also have this uh, green area because we are on the ground of the University of Brompton, which is a beautiful and very spacious campus and there are also Richmond Park which is a uh, 10 minute walk from the campus so it's a, it's a, it's the best of both of both worlds you have the best of peace and quiet and and the excitement of the of the city center uh, so i don't have any more questions coming in so just to wrap up the session i will ask to all of you um, the panel uh, to to give a quick of um, 
a word of wisdom for, for the potential students on the line uh, today. They might have applied already and getting through the application process, or they might um, want this webinar to give them a reason to apply. So if you all have some advice for them, please, uh, please uh, let them know. So we start with Nicole. <laughs> Um, I would say is talk to us, you know, if, if, if you've listened today, you haven't applied and you're not sure and you want to just you know, check, have you got the right experience? Have you got the right degree? The only way you're going to find things out is when you get in touch and you talk to someone. You know, we, I do a lot of the interviews, so you probably see me at some point um, and I, I'll happily help you with whatever advice I can give you. Um, you know, it's, it, it is a unique degree, as we keep saying. Um, if you have the interest, if what you've heard today and you think, I would love to get into the hospitality, real estate, consultancy, development world, I said there's not many degrees that will give you that focused opportunity as we do. Um, so do talk to us, get in touch with us, you know, and we'll support you, you know, all the way that we can. Astrid. I would say be open and be curious and it goes very much hand in hand with what Nicole was saying. Don't, if you have questions, don't hesitate. Uh, if you're curious to know more, then investigate, reach out. Um, if you don't have the answers to your questions yet, then we're here. Um, now is the time to, to explore. And um, this is really the opportunity that we can give you to, to maybe explore a very, very diverse setting of, of areas within one that sounds quite small to begin with, uh, if you're not in the area yourself. So we're here, we're happy to answer questions, but be open, be curious. And Anastasia. Uh, yes, I would agree uh, with like, uh, don't be afraid to uh, to like ask questions because uh, that's the only way you will know uh, if this is uh, a degree for you. And I think um, one key takeaway uh, from this master is that it's, um, as we said, we have a class of 14, so it's very personalized. And I think it's one of the very few masters where you will get such uh, personalized teaching uh, that is actually that close to the industry and that really kind of makes you ready to go into the uh, field straight away. Um, so I think that is um, quite an important one to keep in the back of your mind as well while applying. Thank you. So it is time to, to wrap up this session. Thank you so much Nicole, Anastasia and Astrid. Uh, and thank you to you uh, behind your screen. Um, so as they all uh, advised, uh, please do get in touch. And there are many ways you can get in touch with us uh, via the website. You have the address on your screen right now, contact form or application form. Also on the website, if you uh, deep dive on the information related to each campus, you can find uh, the details of our student ambassadors and get in touch with them all. Uh, you will have their email address and Instagram account. I know you do like a, a private message on Instagram. Um, I encourage you to follow us on, on YouTube. You might find some more information about the program, some interviews of current or past students, um, Instagram account, Facebook account, LinkedIn account. So, so many ways for you to get more information. Thank you again, and I wish you all a lovely rest of the day. Bye for now. Thanks.